What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing what I personally think are going to be the top five most popular builds that will launch on patch 2.4. So I do think this video is appropriate because at the time of recording this video, the official launch of 2.4 will be tomorrow. At the time you guys are watching this video will actually be later today. But I do want to stress that I'm not going to cover some of your typical standard meta builds like Blizzard Sorceress, Hammered In, Smiter, etc. Those are not what I would consider to be a new build. So again, I'm going to use the word new very loosely because on this list, I will be discussing the Foden. So technically, you could make this build in patch 2.4, but it was an awful character outside of PvP because there was a massive cooldown in Fist of Heavens. The Holy Bolts did not pierce and they didn't do damage to the undead and demons. So that's why I want to kind of make this video center around what I think will be the most popular new introduced builds from patch 2.4. So again, hope you guys enjoy this video. Quick reminder before we jump in, just want to let you guys know that if you do enjoy this YouTube content, I do stream twice a week on Twitch and I got the link for my Twitch channel in the description below. So any follows on that platform would be very much appreciated. That being said, guys, let's jump in. So I do want to mention first off that this list is clearly subjective. This is in my humble opinion. Again, feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you guys think I'm totally sleeping on a particular build, but I do honestly think this is pretty accurate. And again, this list will be in no specific order, but the first build that I want to talk about is the new Summon Druid. So I'm going to go over the pros and cons for each of these new builds. Now, in terms of pros for the Summon Druid, you can now summon all of your minions at the same time. So this is a huge quality of life improvement. With everything together, it actually ends up being quite a bit of damage. It's also a very safe build to play for hardcore. So I do think a lot of people doing sort of the solo self-found hardcore kind of playthroughs will maybe gravitate towards a summon druid. And also a third pro is that you're not reliant on corpses to create your minions like the Necro. So you can actually lock specific bosses in place, like whether it's even Uber Lilith, you can lock her in place and then just constantly recast your summons because you don't need to rely on corpses to create new skeletons or revives, etc. So that's one thing that I do think really makes the summon druid a standout build to play. Now in terms of the cons, I do really think that the vines are still lackluster. Again, this is my opinion, with the exception of Carrion Vine, I have talked with a couple community members that have noted with a decent high level Carrion Vine, you actually do get quite a bit of health replenish back. But I do think that it dies very often in Poison Creeper and the Solar Creeper, they're just meh at best in my opinion. And also the major con about this build is that the damage is a little bit lackluster, even with an end game setup, like you really need tons of summoning skills, you know, Beast Rune Words, Might Aura, Pride Mercenaries to really maximize the full damage extent. So it is an expensive build to play to really get that true end game damage, but it will never match a lightning sorceress or a blizzard sorceress or even a hammer. And that's just kind of how it's always going to be for a summon druid. So next up on my list is the Foden. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this will be the single most popular build in patch 2.4. There's a lot of reasons for that. Now first going over the pros, there's multiple different auras that you can use. So whether it's a conviction aura to boost your initial lightning damage, you could use a meditation aura if you want mana recovery, you could use redemption if you want to totally replenish your life and mana when you kill tons of mobs. There are so many different auras. Now kind of tying into that, the different auras and possibilities means you're not tied into using an infinity mercenary. There's a lot of different combinations. Like you could rock an act one meditation mercenary. You could rock an act five frenzy mercenary with a max damage setup. You could go act two with might aura and doom to get holy freeze and get both of those auras combined together. There's just so many different possibilities with a Foden that I really think that's a huge plus to the build. The final pro that I want to talk about is that I do genuinely think that it's a much stronger character than a hammered in with budget gear. You're not as reliant on teleport and with like two spirits, lore helmet, viper magi or stealth body armor and a tele staff. Once you get to cast sanctuary, you can literally obliterate it with that very basic gear. So it's a super powerful build with relatively budget gear. Now, in terms of the cons, I really kind of struggled coming up with a major con for the Foden with the exception of this one is that you don't damage animal type monsters. So by animals, I mean like cows or Eldritch and Shank. Your only source of damage you're getting with farming those types of monsters is, is the initial lightning strike. So it's actually a horrible cow farming build in Eldritch and Shank. So I just wanted to point that out that you're kind of forced to run areas like Chaos Sanctuary that have lots of demons and undead. But a cow farming build is not in kind of the description of what a Foden is capable of doing. The next build that I want to cover is the Charged Strike Lightning Strike Spears on. So this is not necessarily a new build because you could rock this same setup in patch 2.3, but due to the fact that you can now roll the rumored Infinity and Spears, it really does open up a new opportunity for this build. So in any Amazon specific spear, you get like plus three to spear and jabs on skills, but as four up on sockets, you can roll Infinity and take advantage of having that Conviction Aura with the massive negative lightning res that's on Infinity. So you can run around, you basically run up to a boss back, 
hit once with lightning strike, let it arc through all the monsters, and then charge strike and finish off everything else. It's a very fun playstyle. So that's the first pro is that with very good gear, it has insane clear speed. So depending on your setup, if you go teleport or if you don't go teleport, you can just obliterate Chaos Sanctuary. Like you really, it's difficult to tell difference between like players one and players seven. That's how powerful this build is in the Chaos Sanctuary. It's also another pro I think, in my opinion, is it's a different play style than a Javazon. So for those that love playing as the Amazon, but they don't really want to play a Javazon, this is a fun alternative. And you actually get to use Lightning Strike. So I'm gonna call that as a third pro. It's something that you would never use on a Javazon. It's always Lightning Fury and Charge Strike. But now the combination of Lightning Strike and Charge Strike is just a cool playstyle. And the final pro is that I really do think there's, again, similar to the Foden, a lot of versatility in terms of your mercenaries. So you're not tied into using Infinity Merc because you are self-wielding Infinity. So whether that's using, again, a Doom Act 2 mercenary or a High Damage Act 5 Frenzy mercenary or some sort of Fanaticism or Insight Act 1 mercenary for crowd control of Freezing Arrow, there's a lot of different options. So I do think that's another huge pro. In terms of cons for this build, the first one, that infinity is very expensive. So we all know this, Burmal, Burist, it's kind of the most common complaint I get from new players in my YouTube videos is that you're always using infinity, it's very expensive. So that is a clear con with this build. And another con is that due to the playstyle, your resistances are more important than they are with the Javzon. So a lot of my builds with the Javzon, they typically kind of have a high lightning res, sort of mid-range fire, and then I don't worry too much about poison and cold, but you're definitely gonna wanna buff those resistances up a little bit with the charge strike spears on just because the playstyle is different getting right up in monsters faces constantly and using charge strike and lightning strike not hanging back from a distance like the jabs on chucking your javelins with lightning fury so it is definitely more important to make sure you have higher capped resistances than you would with a normal jabs on setup so the second last build on this list is the hydra sorceress now i know a lot of these are going to sound off in the comp section below saying they took back that damage buff that they gave the hydra sorceress it's horrible and it is true that i think that they could have left the damage buff as it was but even with the reduced damage output Having no cooldown on the skill, it makes the Hydra Sorceress an excellent boss sniping character. So believe it or not, with a lower resistance wand, casting Hydras and Fireball, you can moat trick Mephisto faster than you can using Blizzard and Ice Blast. I actually tested this out on my YouTube channel. I'll have the video linked in the description below. But if you're looking for an alternative Sorceress to moat trick Mephisto, the Hydra Sorceress is going to be the build for you. In addition to that, the in terms of like the playstyle, it's a lot different than your standard sorceress. You're kind of hanging back like a traps. And so you cast your hydras out in front of you, they do the work and then you supplement with a fireball or whatever skill you want to use. So it's not sort of your standard point shooting gameplay, which does provide you a different alternative to play as a sorceress, which is nice. And thirdly, there's a lot of different versatility in terms of hybrid build options. So you could, for example, after you fully maxed Hydra, you could pump a bunch of points into Frozen Orb. You could pump a bunch of points into Enchant to hit your Mercenary with a big fire damage buff. You could put a bunch of points into Warmth for higher mana recovery. Or if you wanted to, you could invest more into the Shiver, Frozen, or Chilling Armors because they did buff those skills substantially. Again, just a lot of versatility, which I do think caters very well to this build. Now, in terms of the major cons for the Hydra Sorceress, the major one, in my opinion, is the same for any Fire Sorceress build, is you are restricted in terms of areas that you can effectively farm. Now, they did introduce a couple new level 85 areas, like the Stony Tomb to the Erectus Lair, where there's no Fire Immunes. So it definitely is a better option than what it was previously, but any Fire build is going to suffer from this, and of course the Hydra Sorceress does as well. So the final build on my list is, of course, another Sorceress build. We all know the start of Ladder, it's always flooded with Paladins, Sorceresses, but I do really think that the Nova Sorceress will kind of overtake the Lightning Sorceress for a lot of specific reasons. Now, the first major pro is that for playthroughs, especially through Normal and Nightmare, Nova Sorceress is even stronger now than what it was in patch 2.3. And that is because Static Field now synergizes Nova. So in addition to having a strong Nova, you can have a huge, massive Static Field radius, which is very powerful in Normal and Nightmare. So I do think that in terms of playthrough, the Nova Sorceress is a lot stronger. And again, in addition to those damage synergy changes, it has a lot more damage itself. So with very good end game gear, you can actually crush like players three or even higher Chaos Sanctuary runs. You can supplement like good additional team damage for bail runs or just completely obliterate the pits. Either way, it's a lot more powerful damage of a build, which I do think is good. It also offers a little bit more of an alternative gameplay to, again, your standard Sorceress. So similar to the Hydra Sorceress, you're not kind of pointing and shooting and attacking like you would with the Lightning Sorceress. You're really just tele stomping and then casting Static Field and Nova. So it's a little bit more of an aggressive playstyle. For those that are maybe bored of your standard Sorceress, you might want to take a look at playing the Nova Sorceress this ladder. Now, in terms of cons, I really don't think that there's too many. The only two standout ones, in my opinion, is first that due to the sort of gameplay style of Tele Stomping, 
you are a little bit more susceptible to taking damage, so you might want to prioritize a little bit extra damage reduction in your resistances compared to a normal sorceress. Secondly, even though it is more damage, it's not quite as much, again, as like your standard lighting sorceress. You're not getting 1 to 40k damage, you're getting like 1 to 5k, which it's still a very strong build, it's just not quite as powerful as a standard point of shoot lighting sorceress. So for those that are maybe expecting that kind of damage output, it's not really going to be there. But that basically wraps up, guys, my list of what I think are going to be the top five most popular builds or new builds in patch 2.4. I do want to give a couple honorable mention shout outs, one being the Fire Druid, two being the Boazon, three being Shapeshifting Druid, so the new Werewolf and Werebrick combinations, and four being the Fenzon. I think these are great builds as well. They work pretty good with budget gear with the exception of the Boazon. There's a lot of new opportunities in terms of Shapeshifting builds. And the Fan Amazon is a very powerful budget melee character with something like a triple shield home sedan you get a lot of damage you know dress body armor for a relatively cheap investment but that kind of wraps up this video guys hopefully you enjoyed it again please let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree with me or disagree again i'm not including smite hammered in blizzard sorceress lightning sorceress javs on etc because i don't really consider those new builds but again guys hopefully you enjoyed this video i hope you have a blast with the launch of 2.4 and also the launch of the ladder at the end of the month and again as always if you guys enjoyed this video if you could throw a like on it that'd be awesome help spread it through youtube and other than that, hope you have a great day and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.